Uh, well, there seems to be no respite from the continuous market fall that we are looking at. What's even worse is that we even don't know when the market has hit the bottom or whether it will hit the bottom soon or not. So are you also getting worried looking at the sea of red across your investment portfolio? Then perhaps artificial intelligence can perhaps provide that your portfolio a healing touch. And that's exactly what we are going to be discussing and focusing on in today's discussion. Joining in with me on this show, I have Kanika Agarwal co-founder Upside AI and Atanu Agarwal, co-founder Upside AI as well, which is a fintech startup that aims to revolutionize the investment space with the help of machine learning. Welcome, Kanika and Atanu. Thank you so much for taking the time out for Business Today TV. Thank you, Sakshi, for having us. Thanks, okay, Sakshi. so let Happy me, Kanika, start off with you. I want to discuss with you first at the basic level to help all our viewers really get on board with this. Help us understand what exactly is artificial intelligence or machine le learning based investment. Sure. So uh, essentially what it comes down to is, are you using rules to make your investments or are you making your investments based on, uh, you know, uh, tips, biases, emotions, how you're feeling today about the market, about yourself, about your finances. So the whole idea of using uh, any sort of technology is to get rid of uh, emotions and ad hoc investing, right? Because you want to follow a systemized process. The best way to create long-term wealth is using some rules to invest, right? Um, machine learning, uh, why are we using AI or ML to set these rules? Because we believe that rules need to be dynamic. They need to change with the markets. Uh, the same rules that applied today don't apply last year and won't apply next year. And therefore, uh, you know, can your AI learn mar current markets and then accordingly figure out what you should be buying today? That's really what we're trying to achieve, um, which is why we think using AI or machine learning is very important in making your uh, portfolios and your decisions uh, on a probably not day to day basis, but regularly. Okay, Atanu, help all our viewers really understand what really is the difference between artificial intelligence or machine learning and how does one really get that to the basic level? Yeah, so I think, you know, people maybe nowadays understand what algorithms are. So algorithms are, as you know, simply coded rules which are input into any software. Right? So that's the most basic level of technology that you can use or rules you can use in investing. So that's one level. Yeah. And beyond algorithms comes... Uh, AI and ML. AI is probably the next level and ML is a more specialized type of AI. In machine learning, essentially what ends up happening is that you give a framework to the machine, right? You tell mm. the machine, okay, this is the way to value companies or this is mm. the way to uh, value markets. Now you figure out what type of a market it is or what type of a company it is and what is the best company to buy in this market, right? So the algorithm figures it out. The algorithm uh, uh, absorbs this data and then figures out that, okay, in this market, these are the types of companies that it should buy, right? So the, 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 the machine learning part really is the fact that we are uh, giving the machine only a framework and the machine is figuring out what is the right, uh, it's learning from that framework and figuring out what are the right companies to invest in. So that's the machine learning part. That's where the sort of, that's the next level of using rules mm -hmm. and algorithms uh, than what's currently probably happening in the market. Right. Uh, Kanika, since you were talking about, uh, you know, first to understand how are you really investing an investor to understand whether it is just by going by your decisions, your research to invest in a particular stock or stocks, um, or otherwise, are you looking at employing some tools just like how AI or machine learning does, but help all our viewers really understand if they are first time investors, why should they be really looking at building an AI or a machine learning based investment portfolio? And why not go with the good old uh, research uh, framework, fundamental technical research based investing? Right. So, you know, uh, AI is like electricity. It's a tool. Uh, right. Um, now, what do you do with it? How do you harness it? What's the right product behind which you have to, you know, sort of charge it or make it uh, run? That's really what it's supposed to do. It is not your savior. It is not perfect. Uh, that's not what we're saying AI does. What okay. AI is doing for you is just adding rules uh, mm -hmm. and making them be dynamic. Right? Uh, what happens with humans is that they are all a certain type of investor or a certain type of advisor. Right? Mm -hmm. so, so there'll be um, a great fund manager who is a metals expert or a chemicals yeah. expert or yeah. is a value investor or a growth investor. Yeah. Um, and they all do well in those periods of the market when the mm. way they think and the way the market thinks aligns. 
Hmm. Other than that, there's a lot of mean reversion, which is where they sort of end up doing similar to benchmark or similar to how the broader market is doing. Okay. So for us, uh, and and the same thing applies to an advisor. Say you go to a human uh, advisor and you ask him what to do with your portfolio. He's hmm. going to use his own mental framework of what he thinks will happen in the market, right? Which means that hmm. his biases come into play. He thinks, okay, um, I don't think we should uh, buy commodity stocks because every time I bought commodity stocks for my clients, they've lost money. That's yeah. not true, um, right? Last year there was a commodity super cycle. You should, probably should have been buying commodities, uh, but maybe that advisor may not help you do that because he's had a bad experience. So that's really what you're trying to say when you say try and use AI, try and use ML. It is move away from human biases and emotions, and that mm. will help you invest better. Right? Okay. So how do you build that? So that's really why we think it's very important uh, to use AI and ML. Okay, got that. So Atano, uh, help all our viewers really understand how does it work if a particular investor really wants to create an AI-based portfolio today? How does one go about it? Right. So the thing about AI and ML, uh, you know, actually recently SEBI came out with a circular warning investors against using unregulated platforms for algo trading. Right. Uh, okay. The reason for that is that. It is very non-trivial to use AI and ML, right? Mm-hmm. Kanika gave a good analogy that AI is a tool like electricity, but but the thing is, it's not as easy to use as electricity, right? right? You need subject matter expertise to be able to harness uh, AI and ML uh, in the investment field. Right? For example, in within our co-founding team in Upside, we have a, we have someone who's done his thesis, his doctorate in AI and machine learning, right? And he's done this for uh, nearly a decade before he you know, build this, build these algorithms for us, right? So, so the okay. point is really hard. There are lots of things that to take take into consideration when you're using these tools for your investing portfolio. And hence, I would not recommend this to a retail investor to just go okay. and use AI and ML. I would recommend that you pick a fund manager who you trust, who, who has the credentials to use. Okay, so who all are really using uh, this uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning in India, if not retail investors, who all are using it? How many Indian investors are using it, be it the big mutual fund owners? Could you give us a sense of it um, to understand what is the ballpark figure here? So, so um, like Atanu was saying, uh, mainly uh, any sort of quant is really being used by manufacturers today and not so much retail investors as it mm-hmm. should be, uh, as he rightly pointed out. Um, mm-hmm. Currently, what we're seeing is, um, uh, you know, it breaks out into maybe two or three buckets, right? Uh, there is high frequency trading, which is done by algo firms uh, mm-hmm. who are trying to essentially... Um, you know, look at mispricing opportunities. Say there's a price difference between a, of a stock between BSE and NSE. Can it quickly yeah. capture it? Right, yeah. small things like that. It's it's all millions of trades a second. Uh, sort of behavior is what they're doing. Uh, yeah. Not this is not something that retail investors should should be playing in. Um, there's another one. There's another bucket for technical analysis where you're mm. trying to read price, volume, movement, try and figure out momentum. Uh, you know, mean reversion. Uh, those kind of things where there's a lot of software that ends up being used, um, uh, which a whole bunch of uh, managers are doing um, uh, across mutual funds and otherwise. Uh, and I'll come to the numbers. And the third bucket is, you know, either quantumental or someone who's trying to understand fundamentals and then convert those numbers into figuring out what to buy. Now, yeah. that space is the more interesting one because you're trying to tie true PNL balance sheet cash flow data with what is, you know, what is value in a stock. Yeah. So yeah. lots of interesting things are happening there. You know, there is a bunch of mutual funds that have launched quant funds, uh, you know, DSP as a quant fund. Uh, I think IDFC, almost all large uh, mutual fund houses now have a quant fund. Uh, okay. They're all still very small. I think the total quant mutual fund, uh, uh, AUM and mutual fund level is maybe 2,500 crores, 3,000 crores. So very, very small. Uh, mm. But this is the direction in which, uh, you know, the world will head. This is the direction in which we're all going. Uh, and, and of course, uh, the other way people are using it, like I said, was asset allocation. So lots of balanced advantage funds are now starting to add rules in how they're making a decision. So, for example, the Edelweiss BAF tries and combines technical analysis, some momentum, etc. to try, try and figure out what to build. Um, small cases, there are a bunch of small cases that use technical analysis uh, to pick momentum strategies. Uh, People like us, uh, you know, uh, we at Upside AI are trying to teach machines how to do fundamental investing. So our inputs are only company financials uh, based on which uh, uh, our algos are trying to figure out what are good stocks or good assets to buy today. Absolutely. Uh, That's very important in the landscape. 
that's exactly where it gets interesting you know uh, for all our viewers to really understand uh, if they use ai based or machine based learning for their investment portfolios how will it really decide as to at this point in time how much asset uh, allocation needs to go into equity is to debt and to other things as well and what all really gets covered in uh, your platform as well atan yeah sure so uh, you know we have bunch of different algorithms that you've developed uh, when we use them um, you know sometimes stand alone sometimes together uh, in in our products right so and we have different types of products we have equity products we have you know hybrid products so uh, you know I've, what we've seen at least at, at our level in our algorithms is that uh, the algorithm till last year had a pretty high allocation towards equities hmm. uh, as compared to gold and debt okay and okay. now uh, over 2022 it, it has moved some of the allocation into gold and debt right so uh, and because you know it took that call um it has done well relative to the market right because in 2022 the market as we all know has been uh, down uh, double digits but we've mm-hmm. been able to uh, still be positive more or less in terms of our return right so so the reason it did it is because it moved away from equity at the right time it was able to allocate some uh, Uh, some dynamically allocate more to gold and debt, yeah. right? So that I mean, again, this is something our algorithm did by reading macro data and figured that this is the right time. So yeah, I mean, it's the same approach for human investors, right? Even if you're not using algorithm, what I would say is try, not don't try and be dynamic, but at least make sure that you have a mix of uncorrelated assets in your portfolio, right? Which okay. means you should have equity, you should have debt, you should have real estate, gold. Right, these are all uncorrelated assets which are available to you, so to some extent, crypto if it's possible. Right, so so that's 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 the learning. Right, uh, it's not always possible for humans to be dynamic, but the algorithm absolutely. Can- Right. Taken that point, uh, Kanika. Just to extend what uh, Atanu has said, you know, we understand that the tools that you're using right here are uh, advising you at this point in time in the current market, very very volatile market scenario, to shift a little bit out into debt, perhaps diversify into gold as well. But many uh, traditional investors, you know, they use a lot of uh, investment techniques when it comes to thematic, uh, you know, themes, you know, based investing or perhaps sector based investing. You know, when you see some momentum uh, stocks coming. into for there is some regulatory changes that happen that actually push the uh, some of the other stocks or particular sectors into momentum so how do all of those things get in- incorporated uh, with ai and machine learning so the, they do uh, and other managers do it um, we are not experts at uh, timing the market or uh, suddenly making changes to the portfolio um, yeah. you know uh, we started uh, upside ai after we read intelligent investor which is benjamin graham uh, you know who's warren buffett's mentor so our thinking has always been you know that you need to look for fundamental trends and buy stocks that where price and fundamentals move in tandem mm-hmm. so uh, therefore we we are not momentum experts we don't end up buying stocks that are you know go if something's going up it'll go up further right that's broadly what you're trying to do with momentum uh, but having said that you know our equity portfolio right now um, that we've been holding for the last 6 months or so has been slightly uh, infrastructure adjacent uh, mm. so we were buying uh, you know the cement early logistics uh, we've started adding pharma uh, there were banks uh, in the portfolio so those are three or four sectors uh, that we have been uh, you know holding within our portfolios uh, for the last 6 months or so Okay, Atanu also wanted to understand. You know, can AI? What I was uh, saying right in the beginning is what investors must be really keen to understand. That can AI-based investment really help uh, protect our portfolios in situations like market crash, like what we are witnessing right now? Very, very volatile markets and huge uh, one-day fall is what we have been witnessing right now. So, can AI really help there? Yeah, I mean the answer to that is really that the the two things that can help you uh, in these situations is. more than ai is use some some system right now whether it is a dynamic system like ai or whether it is a static system where mm. you have fixed that allocation and you follow that religiously uh, mm. that that's i think the more important thing you know you're supposed mm. to, you should you should have some system in place and the second thing is uh, being diversified right in the sense that you need to have i know it sounds easy to do but people don't often yeah. follow where you're supposed to be disciplined about investing in uncorrelated assets and and again the whole point of ai is that one it does this dynamically so it's able to adapt quicker than humans are to changing market conditions and the second mm. thing is the most important thing i think is that ai takes the decision making out of your hands that it the ai starts making the decision for itself 
which is is a huge value add right which you know basically if the machine or ai is making the decisions then you uh, you are not you know forced to be bring in your own biases while making investment decisions right that is i think the primary uh, usp of ai using ai for investing yeah absolutely but uh, atanu also wanted to understand this uh, while i ask you this question that you know we've seen two very unprecedented situations uh, in the last two years one was covid and the other was war nobody anticipated that so in that kind of a scenario how did the, the portfolios based on ai and machine learning really respond to that situations and have you been able to even beat the market returns at this point in time using ai and machine learning yeah so it's you know uh, we don't use any news Based events in our algorithms, I can't speak for the market. Other players in the market, but we don't use any news-based events. So, in that sense, when when events like COVID or you know the war happened, uh, we did have drawdowns in our portfolio, right? Uh, and just like the at the same level as markets, right? We saw the same level of drawdowns in March, and now we saw some drawdowns in our equity portfolio even in in uh, February. But the point is that afterwards, when the market is recovering. we are able to recover much faster we are able to do better returns in that period right again because mm. we have long only portfolios right we are not hedging our portfolios in any way so again in our case we don't we don't as tanika said we are not experts in predicting where the market will go or trying to factor in any news and sort of anticipating something and then uh, taking a call we are experts in picking the right opportunities which we will do well in the long term right uh, and compounding uh, capital in the long term so mm. so yeah I mean, short answer is YTD. Could you mention any quantum there? There, YTD. What's the kind of returns you are getting on your portfolios? So, in our in our uh, navigator, which is the hybrid fund, uh, it's done uh, about I think point point five percent so far in twenty twenty two when the market, as you know, is down over ten. So okay so it has outperformed in a, in that way uh, so uh, that's good uh, kanika just uh, to wrap it up i wanted to understand for all those first time investors really watching this program uh, they must be really wondering as to uh, how can they incorporate machine learning and ai uh, what would you really suggest to them three things that they should begin as an investor right now uh, as they begin to explore even ai and machine learning so uh most return, there are there are three steps to generating returns right uh, one is asset allocation next is selecting your stocks and then third is timing the market right um so all those three almost look like a pyramid in terms of how important they are uh asset allocation is 80% of your returns are generated based on which assets you are in stock selection and timing the market uh, where we spend the most time talking and thinking about actually contribute the least Mm. right um so so to my mind uh, the best way to use ai and ml is to invest in strategies that are dynamically moving your money between different asset classes uh, mm. that is the best way to to be using these kind of strategies to generate returns uh, don't invest in them to say okay, okay if i invest in this i'm going to make 50% and 100% returns that's that's when you start doing that there's a you know if if something is too good to be true it's probably not true right mm-hmm. uh, so so be realistic about your expectations of what technology does for you um it is supposed to uh, hold your hand it is supposed to do a slight better job uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, you know it's god so uh, th- my advice would be uh, you know start at asset allocation level and pick strategies where they're using ml to move your money between asset classes based on how markets are moving uh, and then everything else solves itself later Okay well on that note thank you so much Kanika and Atanu for being with us on this show and helping us really make sense of what AI and machine learn uh, based uh, investing portfolios really do for us and why should investors really go ahead and discuss and explore at least uh, whether this can be a better strategy to adopt than the traditional ways of investing thanks a lot for being with us thank you Bob. thank you thank you